TLO, what's pop? We are on kick, K I C K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right above me, this is the channel. If we do go live and you happen to miss it, this is where any highlights and things of that nature will be. Uh, don't forget, we also got merch, got mine on. Um, and we also got the Patreon. We post Monday through Friday. You get me. No Saturday, no Sunday, man. Uh, the link to all of this is down in the description under a thing called Linktree. Click that Linktree and everything will pop up for you. This is the Deadly War in East London. 98s. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my boy Billy. Allegedly. I think he with them right. And ZT, ZT, I don't... I don't be following beef. Today we are in Hackney, but which here is we a go. borough in London. Hackney ranks particularly highly in the Child Poverty Index at 41%, making it the third highest in London. Parts of the borough such as Hackney Wick has undergone gentrification ever since the Olympics in 2012, and the area now attracts richer, younger professionals. However, it is still one of the most deprived areas in the city. Today we'll be looking at two gangs who have been warring each other for more than two decades. Don't be fooled, man. They do that in Chicago too. They try to gentrify these hoods and, and spread out the, you know what I'm saying, the, the negativity. But underlying, there's, 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 that's still the hood. There's some nice buildings in the hood. <laughs> that's all that is. 98 VZTs. 98 being a combination of Homerton located in E9 and Holly Street located in E8, hence 98. ZT aka Zero Tolerance are located in London Fields. The hit Netflix show Top Boy is based on a real London Fields gang, Zero Tolerance. Oh, that's they based that to them? I don't even. ZTs suffer zero tolerance. London oh. Fields is an infamous estate located in Hackney, East London, in the E8 postcode. It has already been known for its violence, especially in the... I didn't even know they was referencing a real gang when he said that. I thought it was made up. ...late 90s and early 2000s. Historically, they beefed TMD, Tottenham Mandel. During the same time, London Fields started beefing with another infamous Hackney... R.I.P. ...that being L.O. In time, London... R.I.P. Bando's that The field started Mark. beefing with another infamous Hackney crew, that being LOM, Love of Money, located across several estates in the E5 and N16 postcodes. This specific beef started when Fox started robbing prominent London field boys, such as DC and Hypo, also shooting Hypo on the same occasion. Back then, Homerton was known as Balance and it was part of the E9 to E5 link up, known as 925. Neither they or Hollow Street would be for London Fields at the time. Things, however, changed due to greed. Robberies ensued, which sparked the beef. That's how it always happens, greed. Pepe Brown, a 20-year-old leader of a gang of youth, wanted revenge on two youngsters who belonged to London Fields. He and his gang, the Hollow Street Boys, were joined by the Square Boys, a gang based in Clapton. Aaron Salmon, one of the leaders of the Square Boys, who was a 17-year-old crack cocaine dealer, had just been robbed by some London field boys at gunpoint. His car and heavy jewellery was taken, and to make matters worse, it happened all in front of his girlfriend. So on the night... Oh yeah, he definitely wanted this to get back. I don't condone none of this, you know, I'm just speaking. You too. 9th of June 2003, it happened all in front of his girlfriend. So on the 9th of June 2003, Pepe Brown, Aaron Salmon and two others, armed with a pistol and a shotgun, and with their faces hidden by ski masks and balaclavas, drove up in a convoy of three cars where LFB member JD was spotted. He was sadly shot dead at the junction of Lansdowne Drive and Shubland Road in Hackney JD. as he played the game of money up with his friend. JD was the brother of CS, the London Fields boss, so you can imagine the significance of his death. And why oh yeah, that's a war. They've been warring since. Pepe Brown and Aaron Salmon were both sentenced to life for the murder of JD. Bam! Hello, Fresh. Guys, how did they get caught? Who told on them?
Now, Derek Boateng, also known as D-Dot, was an up-and-coming London Fields member who was deeply loved. Sadly, on the 24th of April 2013, on his 16th birthday, he was attacked in broad daylight on the 393 bus in Highbury, New Park, North London. Uh, man, that's the thing, man. Y'all gotta know what come with this life. It's cool when you climb in the ranks. It's cool when you, you know, get into the bag. It's cool when the females is around. But when it's when it's wartime, just know, just know that just because you going home and you tired, it don't stop. It's never stop. There's no laws. There's no rules to to uh, what's the word called? Rules of engagement in street war. There's only like a couple, and and you were sixteen. R.I.P. But none of those would have saved you. Around 3 p.m. on Tuesday, by a 925 Pembury member known as Skid, D Dot received a stab wound to the heart. He was later airlifted, where he was on life support for a couple of days, Damn. and it was considered that he was brain dead. He sadly died in hospital. 15 year old Skid, real name Sean Green, was charged with his murder. Sean Green claimed he carried the knife because he was scared after an alleged attack by Derek six months ago. An explanation which Judge Fulton said did not ring true. He said the jury had rejected his claims of self-defense and that the courts would do everything they can do to stop this terrible crime. Whatever the reason, said the judge, you attacked him and killed him. Sadly, he had the knife and produced it to defend himself. You leant over a woman in the aisle seat and stabbed him in the chest. A knife is a weapon that cuts and kills so easily. He added you were seen watching their- 12 years. He was a minor, it's 12 years, well, six, they say he was 15, bro will be out in his 20s still, he's not even hit his prime yet, he's going to be out and about. As he collapsed on a bus, you knew then at least you had injured him severely, that's what you went to the flats to dispose of the knife, Sean Green was jailed for a minimum of 12 years. After his death, D Dot's friends would create zero tolerance in his honor. Prominent Z team members include Ballistic, Frisco, Psycho, Trey, Asbo, etc. Now J Dot was a Homerton member whose real name was Jeremy Malenki. He was a refugee from Congo who got asylum in the UK in 2004 for a better life. Academically, he didn't waste that opportunity as he was a straight A student. He was good friends with a girl known as Sana Ibrahim. She was everything he would want in a female friend. Little did he know she was everything but a friend. Right, she looked like the queen of backdoor. On the 6th of January 2015, Gashi and J Dot were joined by Sana Ibrahim on a journey from Swindon to London via train. During the journey, Sana made 36 calls to Z team members, Psycho, Trey, and a 14 year old. The honey trap was laid and the plan- 36? So what y'all thought she was doing? Uh, J Dot and other mans? What y'all thought she was doing making 36 calls? Like what would she go to the back? Is there a tr bathroom on the train or what? Like in front of y'all? I was to ambush J Dot and Gashi at Hackney Central Station at 11 p.m. When they got to the station, they were set upon by Z team members, but by the grace of God, both J Dot and Gashi managed to get away. With adrenaline pumping through. Wait. Top Boy was actually depicting real scenes? I had no idea that Top Boy was loosely based on truths. His system, J Dot, allegedly. The true nature of Sana. Sana met with the Z team members to plan another attack. Sana then began looking for J Dot and his friend. J Dot and Gashi were spotted again, but this time on Homerton High Street. J Dot was caught. He was stabbed three times in the chest as Sana watched on. Even in his last moments, J Dot had no clue about her true nature. J Dot was sadly pronounced dead at the scene. The three Z team members were arrested along with Sana. Prosecutor Timothy Cray QC said, Phone records linked Ibrahim to the gang of the boys, while CCTV showed she met them after the initial ambush to plan the second deadly attack. The three defendants who did this. Yeah, she just is guilty. She going to jail for a long. Uh, I don't know in the UK, but 
So you're going to jail. Davin did not act alone. They were assisted by the first defendant, Sana Ibrahim. Sana Ibrahim was initially thought to be a witness to the murder, but told no. the issue of lies to the police. When she came to court, she claimed that Melengi and his friends had been planning to steal a stash of drugs she was looking after, and she would call for assistance to stop them. She also told the court that she had seen all three boys with knives after the attack as they ditched them in the canal. Sana from Hackney, Trey Morgan from Clapham, and Williams, street name. 16 years, 14 and 18. Must have 18 years. He must have been doing the, the 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 actual, you know what I'm saying, duty. She looked like she be backdooring people though. Look at her. She don't look like backdoor general. Like what? Psycho from Woodford Green and the 14 year old from Stoke Newton all denied murder. Williams admitted wounding with intent to cause grievous bodily harm over a previous incident, but a jury of seven women and five men took just two hours to convict Sana and the two other boys of Malenge's murder. Sana is set to serve at least 14 years in detention. Trey Morgan, who was banned from entering Hackney after being released from custody for another stabbing, was sentenced to 16 years. And Williams, on bail for a previous stab attack at the time, was sentenced to 18 and a half years, with two year concurrent sentence for the first stabbing. The 14 year old was sentenced to 12 years detention. Now, Sheggs was a Homerton member and close friends with J-Dot. He was deeply troubled by his murder and this was the catalyst for him to fall deeper into the gang life. Despite Sheggs enrolling to the University of Stevenage, he was still a gang member, regularly returning to the ends. Sheggs was one of Homerton's top scorers and would regularly score on Zen team members as revenge for J-Dot. Now, Stokey 16 boy spinning, huh? are a gang based in the N16 slash E5 area of Hackney. They are heavily linked to ZT. On the 13th of November, 2000... Hey, if any of you is just watching this, I ain't got nothing to do with nothing. I'm on the outside looking in. Don't be mad at me for watching this or, or, or giving my opinion. I ain't even going to say what I was going to say because this is YouTube and I don't condone it, YouTube. But you know, y'all got real issues. I'm not the one. 2017. Sheggs and five other Homerton members travelled in a white van to Stoke Newton looking for ops. Khan Aslan, a Stokey 16 affiliate, was spotted, chased and viciously stabbed by the attackers. Paramedics fought to save his life but he was pronounced dead at the scene 15 minutes later. Sheggs was arrested but shortly released. At least five men were thought to have taken part in the planned attack but just one, Bruno 24 from Homerton was standing trial for his murder. It originated in a rivalry between three gangs, the Niners, Stokey 16 and London Fields according to the Crown Court. Just a week before the attack, the defendant's brother, said to be a member of the Niners gang, so called after the E9 postcode, was attacked and seriously injured after driving with his girlfriend. The attack was then glorified in a gang rap video posted to YouTube which includes the lyrics, do him up in front of his baby mother, couldn't give a F about his girlfriend. Yeah, that's, that's, that's negative. That's definitely negative. <laughs> Hence, this was the catalyst for Bruno and his friends to go out looking for a potential target or targets upon whom they could vent their anger and get revenge, Mr. Glasgow told the jurors. Upon seeing Khan Aslan, the group chased down a target and butchered him. He was spotted in the street and his attackers demanded to know where he was from. And when he tried to escape, he was set upon. One of the stab wounds in Mr. Aslan's chest was 12 centimeters deep and five centimeters left, leaving a gash in his heart. Bruno was found guilty and sentenced to 27 years for the murder of Khan Aslan. At Unif All that was now, was it worth it? I know y'all sitting in jail 27 years. Y'all thinking to yourself, man, it wasn't even worth it. That's tough. Two people lost their life that day. That man y'all did that to, and you, because you in there 27 years. Sheggs, he had caught his seven years for the murder of Khan Aslan. As for Sheggs, he had caught his first body in the streets, and despite that, he was a free man. 
Shortly after, Sheggs returned to Stevenage and on the 24th of November, a police officer and some colleagues attempted to stop a black Vauxhall Astra that Sheggs was driving. He was driving without a license, driving with no insurance and in possession of cannabis. Sheggs left the officer with a head injury and fled the scene. Police dogs and a police helicopter were deployed in the area and a man was subsequently detained by officers at around 2.15 a.m. A short while later, another two men were tracked in the same area by a police dog and they were also detained. All three men, including Sheikhs, were arrested on suspicion of GBH with a tent. The two other men, aged 19 and 20, were released with no further action taken against them. Sheikhs, however, was to appear at Stevenage Magistrate Court in December. It didn't take no longer than a month for Sheikhs to strike again. Along with Unknown T and a few other Niners, they would attend a New Year's Eve party in Islington. A civilian known as Steve Narvez Jara got into a verbal war with them after he attempted to drop game on one of their girls. The situation quickly escalated and it turned into a brawl. Steve was rushed by the gang, he was stabbed in the chest and arm during the attack with a blow to the chest piercing his heart. Sadly, Steve was pronounced dead at the This is a civilian, he was just fighting. See, this is why I don't go to parties. Don't even invite me, I'm not going. I'm good. If I can't get in there with that, you know what I'm talking about? I'm not going. Even if I can, I don't even want to put myself in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't invite me. I'm good. <clears throat> if it's a house party, I do not do house parties. A scene at around 3.30 a.m. Shegs now had two bodies and was still a free man. As for Unknown T, as Homerton's biggest rapper. Shegs was walking around that month like King Von, wasn't he? He was really making a name for himself in the UK drill scene. His hit Homer and B later that year would become the first UK drill song to go silver, which is 200,000 sales in the UK. Just a few. Silver is 200,000? Okay, yeah. A few months after that fatal New Year's Eve party and trouble would follow Shegs again. On the 4th of April 2018, Shegs' real name, Israel Ogunsola was cycling through Morning Lane in Hackney when he was spotted by Z team members oh. Tiny Booth and B2 who were riding in a Vauxhall Astra. They approached him and all three individuals drew for their knives. Sheggs managed to stab B2, however he was outnumbered and this resulted in Tiny Booth managing to stab Sheggs several times before the Z team members fled the scene. Sheggs was stabbed six times. The attack was so brutal that the paramedics had to rip him out of his clothes to treat him. Unfortunately, despite receiving first aid, he died at the scene about a half an hour later. This is like, this is what I'm saying, man. Just remember, man, know what come with it. And no karma. Karma is real. Karma is real and the higher power is real. You think God going to let you do all of this stuff and walk away free? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He is going to allow the devil to penetrate your life and take it. That's tough. Tiny booth would flee. All right, Peter. I can't be on here telling nobody to not do whatever they need to do, but like, all right, P. Leave the country and return to Africa where he was hiding until this day. As for B. He got up out of there. Two, he would be charged despite fighting the murder case by insisting it was a self-defense. Jonathan Abora, AKA B2, was convicted at the Old Bailey following a three-week trial and sentenced to 17 years. Ultimately, Sheggs was running on borrowed time for all the stuff he did. Now, just after a few months after Sheggs' death, remember the murder him, Unknown T and others were a part of on the New Year's Eve? Well, Unknown T was charged with the murder of Stephen Narvez Jara, the 19-year-old really? T, whose real name is Daniel Lena, has also been charged with violent disorder. Two other men, Mohammed Musa and Rahman Boland, both 20, were also charged with murder and violence. So unknown T be outside. That's tough. He got charges, man. Shakes would have been makes sense though because of this guy, but this is a civilian though. Know, it... In a part of this case, however, he died before he was charged, which makes you think if death didn't end his life, the law would have put him away for a long time. Just like Vaughn. R.P. Vaughn. During Unknown T's period in jail, he got really close with Digger D. This flourished into a friendship and an alliance in the streets. 
Allegedly. Following the trial, Unknown T had insisted he had nothing to do with Steve's death, that he did not punch anyone and had no knowledge of anyone armed with a machete at the party. Unknown T and Borland were both cleared of murder, but Borland was convicted of manslaughter by a majority of 10 to 2. Unknown T dropped a fresh home as his first release out and it did very well. ZT were not happy about this link up for obvious reasons. So 88, a ZT member, got the drop on Digger D when he was in East London and robbed him for his diamond bracelet, then jumped on the track broke it. back to brag about the robbery. Digger D, for obvious reasons, was not too happy and DM'd him this cryptic message of there being a countdown. As far as we know, till this day, nothing has happened to Mr. 88. Of course nothing happened to Mr. 88. Who... How did, how did that message get out? I'm gonna show you some specific... Uh, yeah, of course, after that message hit the internet, you can't do nothing to him. He's virtually untouchable. Because you know who they're going to run to. I mean, no, I mean, I'm, that's just what it is, honestly. Whether he leaked it or somebody else leaked it, he's not getting touched after that, after a leak. On October 11, 2020, Diba, aka Blacker, who was a ZT jewel rapper, and Fahim Rahman drove a stolen car to a property on Homerton High Street to carry out a drill. When they arrived at the property, they shot into a nearby park with a scorpion machine gun at three men they believed were part of a rival gang. However, those they shot were innocent members of the public socializing in Homerton Park. Blacker was arrested on November 27th. And that's, why you don't bro that's why you don't do that in the crowds. You gotta... <laughs> charged with three counts of attempted murder and firearm offenses he was later sentenced to 35 years in damn well he got three counts of am so prison while fahim rahman got 27 years now at 8 p.m on november 22 2020 at broadway market nine samba arthur abidi and scarborough are all members associated with the nines gang who went to the rival London Fields territory to film a music video. Up to 10 members playing with their life of the Nine Gang met in Victoria Park accompanied by a camera crew before making their way to Broadway Market. After being spotted by rival Z team members, a shootout occurred. Gunman opened fire at them discharging a number of bullets. Unfortunately, like all wars, people who have nothing to do with it get caught up in the violence. And Natalie Bignall, a woman who was standing outside. Damn, these, these both sides be hitting civilians like a mug. Like, what's going on? At a nearby pub, she was on a first date and it was a terrible misfortune to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. On a first date. She was shot in the neck by a straight bullet. She has been left with C4 spinal cord injury, resulting in her becoming a quadriplegic at the age of 32. This life shattering injury means she has lost the ability to move and feel anything from her neck down to her feet. The reality is that Natalie will never be I don't think not I don't think neck down to her feet. Her arms are clearly moving. She might be waist down. And her neck is turned. I think she waist down. Be able to walk again or have use of her hands. However, she's moving her arms or somebody holding them. Severity of Natalie's injury. In this picture, she looked like she's going like this. Our care specialist equipment, I don't know. regular physiotherapy, and an accessible home that is able to cater to all of her needs. While her care is partially being funded by the NHS, without being able to work and receive a regular income, Natalie urgently needs additional support. I've linked her GoFundMe in the description box if you want to help. Ramel Arthur received two years and four months for violent disorder. Samba jailed for two years and two months for the same offence. Kai Scarborough was jailed for one year and 11 months. And Ronnie Abidi, 27, of no fixed address, was jailed for two years and three months. Now, not gonna lie, they got off light. Ruel Briscoe, who goes by Shades, was charged with conspiracy to commit grievously bodily harm with intent. 
possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life and possession of ammunition with intent to endanger life. He was also charged with five counts of attempted murder and one count of possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life. So he, he should get 47 years. On a separate shooting when shots were fired from one car at a group of men in another in Middleton Road. The 25 year old suffered a head injury and was left fighting for his life in hospital. He is now in critical condition. Two other victims, all aged in their 20s, sustained minor injuries. It's fair to say that Shades is an absolute madman. He's yet to go to trial. Oh, he ain't. He, he's still outside. Now, Hypo, aka Big Hype, was an original London Fields boy, known for his tunes, money making, and past work. On the 3rd of June 2020, Hypo was at a party in East London. Allegedly, at some point, Hypo had a disagreement with the bouncer at the party. The bouncer being Bigger, a rapper from Enfield. The situation... I don't feel like rappers can be bouncers at any point. Like, I get it, you gotta get money, but like... Especially if you're an affiliated with, with, a, with a gang, like, you can't be no bouncer. You, you're bound to run into an op. An escalate. The bouncer being Bigger, a rapper from Enfield. The situation escalated and Hypo backed out a ramble of Bigger and threatened him. Bigger allegedly walked off before coming back with a kitchen knife and stabbing Hypo in the chest, killing him. This caused big problems in fields because Bigger is Tiny, who's a London field boy's cousin, and Hypo was a hackney legend. Bigger is currently on remand awaiting trial. KB, aka Y. Booth was an older London Fields member being around since 2007. He was a part of the London Field Youngers, but he was also close ties to London Field Boy members like Margs and Hypo. Later, KB became zero tolerance, but just to manage rappers like Lats, Blacker, etc. On the 13th of August, 2022, he became a gang member just to manage people. Police were called to Forest Riot shortly before 9.30 p.m. after reports of gunshot. The victim, 25-year-old Casey Booth, he was driven to hospital by loved ones but tragically died there from his injuries. His death was allegedly retaliation for the stabbing of Gashi 98. The day before and a get back for the 98s were itching for, constantly ridiculed by their ops for losing two members. They finally dropped something back. 98 members KO and Rico were from the 9th, Homerton, and Hitman from the 8th being Holly Street. All three were charged for his murder, but before that, KO dropped an iconic diss track titled Laughing Stop. Dubbed UK's duo's best lyricist, KO eloquently pulled out his feelings on this track after feeling like he had answered his ops taunting. Funny how with a laughing stop, someone gets slapped and a laughing stops. I remember that song. I remember the negativity that was put in there as well as saying load this nine and send them lugas but they lose their sense of humor blame it on the guys it's rumors only those on the glass should know the shooter when no one knows it's smoother revenge has no expiring really it should have been sooner sure there'll be more in the future he's currently fighting the case and the trial is yet to start that Shit, they use them lyrics concludes the story so far i send my condolences as always to the family of yeah 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 definitely all right peter all that fallen but you know what i'm saying they knew what came with that with this life man tlo leave a like comment subscribe turn on your post i'm gone